Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000 Segmented Memory. In this presentation, we'll show you how to use the segmented memory functions of Rodian Schwartz RTB2000 series oscilloscopes. This presentation assumes a basic knowledge of how to operate the RTB2000. If you're new to the RTB, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000 Basic Operation, before beginning this presentation. Let's start with a high-level overview of history and segmented memory, which is enabled by the RTB K15 software option. This option allows acquired waveforms to be stored in so-called segmented memory, something we'll explain in detail in just a moment. A segment table is used to index or reference these stored segments. The stored waveforms can then be individually analyzed using all of the standard analysis tools available on the RTB. And, these waveforms or segments and the associated table can also be exported for offline analysis or documentation with both the waveforms and the table files in standard CSV format. History mode stores data for all active channels, which means that several channels can be acquired simultaneously but can be analyzed separately. Before we walk through how to do this on the RTB, let's first pause for a moment to explain what we mean by segmented memory. All oscilloscopes have a finite amount of memory that can be used for storing acquired waveforms. In normal operation, the contents of that memory are displayed at the end of each acquisition and then cleared to make room for the next acquisition. This can, however, lead to inefficient use of memory. For example, if we're measuring a waveform that occurs infrequently, a substantial percentage of the scope's memory might end up being used to store uninteresting periods, and this in turn limits how much interesting waveform data we can store. Here, only about 40% of our memory is being used to store interesting data. Segmented memory is a way to use memory more efficiently when trying to capture or analyze infrequent events. We could configure our oscilloscope to trigger on each pulse and define how much time, or rather how many samples, the scope should acquire for each trigger. Each of these periods then becomes a segment, which is then stored in segmented memory, along with that segment's timestamp. As you can see, this mode makes much more efficient use of the limited oscilloscope memory. The process of acquiring a certain number of samples per trigger and storing them continues until segmented memory is full. Note that the time between triggers can be quite long, making segmented memory very useful for catching rare events, analyzing slow-speed serial protocols, etc. A segment table is used to store information about each segment, specifically the segment number or index, the trigger mode, that is, whether the segment was captured on a trigger event or due to an auto-trigger, and that segment's timestamp, either as an absolute time or as a relative time. Note that for both segment number and relative timestamps, values are given as negative values relative to the most recently acquired segment. On the RTB2000, segmented memory configuration and analysis are called history mode, and there are four main steps in using history mode and segmented memory. First, we need appropriate measurement settings for the trigger, vertical, and horizontal systems. These are usually the same as the settings you would use if operating with non-segmented memory. Second, the history mode parameters have to be specified, the number of segments to capture, and the length of each segment. Next, we run an acquisition. Acquisitions can be made in either a single shot or a continuous mode. After acquisition has been stopped, the captured segments can be viewed, analyzed, and or saved as files. To start history mode, choose History from the RTB menu and then enable Show History. Enabling history brings up the segment table and history player, although both of these will be inactive during an acquisition. When acquisition is stopped, the segment table will be populated with the acquired segments and the history player buttons will become active. We'll go through both of these in just a moment. Note that even after exiting history, the segment table can still be reopened by simply re-enabling Show History. There are two required settings in history mode. The first of these is record length, which defines the number of samples and therefore the time duration of each segment. The second is the number of segments. Like all oscilloscopes, the RTB has finite memory, so the record length will be adjusted based on the number of segments. Note too that if you change the number of segments, this will delete any stored history data. The easiest way to configure these is to use the Auto function. 
Auto uses the same record length that is defined in the acquisition settings and adjusts the number of segments accordingly. After configuring history parameters, running and stopping an acquisition will cause the segments to appear in the segment table, and the history player will also become active. As mentioned earlier, the segment table contains the index, trigger mode, and timestamp of all segments. Clicking on a segment in the segment table will display that acquisition. You can use the Previous and Next buttons, or the Multifunction knob on the RTB, to scroll forward or backward through the acquisitions. Or you can jump to a given acquisition by entering that acquisition's number. In addition to statically viewing individual waveforms, the History Player can also display a live playback of the acquisitions by pressing the Play button. The acquisitions are displayed in sequential order, and if necessary, we can pause and then scroll backwards or forwards to identify and analyze any interesting acquisitions. It's also possible to change the playback speed and or set the playback to a continuous loop. In live mode, there are three additional history player functions. Average displays the average of the current and all previous segments. This can reduce the influence of noise, but does require a stable, triggered, repetitive signal. Overlay mode draws the acquisitions on top of each other, with an effect similar to infinite persistence. And envelope mode displays the max and min values of current and previous segments, along with a currently played back acquisition. History data, that is the segments and the segment table information, can be saved to a USB drive. This is possible even if show history is not currently active. To save history data, press the Save Load button and then choose Waveforms. Be sure to change the data type or points to History Data. Note that the segment data can be saved for a single channel or for all channels. One last note, if the number of segments is very large, the time required to save them can be somewhat long. Part of the reason why saving history can take some time is that the waveform points for each acquisition are stored as individual CSV files, all of them in a single directory. Segment files are named automatically. For example, c one underscore seven dot CSV is the seventh acquisition or segment for channel one. The segment table is stored as a file named index.csv in the same directory as the waveforms. This file points to the acquisition data for each entry in the table. An additional feature in history mode is something called fast segmentation. When an oscilloscope performs an acquisition, normally each acquisition is processed and displayed before the next acquisition occurs. The time needed to process and display an acquisition creates a blind time during which the scope is not acquiring, and this can lead to infrequent events being missed. Blind times can be minimized using fast segmentation. When this mode is enabled, acquisitions are stored in memory without being displayed or processed. On the RTB, fast segmentation lowers blind times to 2.5 microseconds or less. Acquired waveforms are only displayed after the acquisition run is completed. Note that fast segmentation must be run in single acquisition mode, but with the number of single acquisitions being set to greater than one. Let's compare these two modes. With fast segmentation off, the RTB processes and displays the waveforms as they're acquired, which increases both blind times and the total time needed to fill the history. If fast segmentation is turned on, the waveforms are stored in history without processing or updating the display. The acquisitions occur much more quickly, and blind times are substantially reduced. Let's end with a brief summary. Segmentation improves memory efficiency when acquiring waveforms, particularly in the case of rare or infrequent events. Interesting samples are stored as individual segments, along with timestamps and triggering information. There are four steps in using segmented memory on the RTB. First, standard parameters such as vertical and horizontal scaling, triggering, etc. are configured as usual. Then, history mode is used to define the number and duration of each segment. When the acquisition is started, segments are stored in memory, and when the acquisition is stopped, the segments can be analyzed using the standard RTB analysis tools, as well as the built-in history player. Segment waveform data and the segment table can also be exported to USB for offline analysis. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the RTB 2000 Segmented Memory. If you'd like to learn more about the RTB, or how memory is used in oscilloscopes, please see the links in the video description. 
Thanks for watching.